Hi, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the basics of playing uh, the three string cigar box uh, guitar. There's loads of stuff out there, and I'm sure you, some of you may have seen it. Uh, I haven't really uh, done any instructional videos, so I'm going to have a, have a little go at doing a little bit on cigar box uh, guitar basics. This guitar uh, is tuned uh, C, G, C. Uh, don't worry about if you're knowing exactly the same tuning. The intervals between the notes are the important things. Uh, unfortunately, here's a little bit of theory, but the great thing about a cigar box guitar is it's very under easy to understand basic theory, music theory. Uh, we've got a root note here, which is a C. We've got a, which is the bottom string, the lowest string, lowest sounding string. On the top, I've got another C, and that's an octave above. So you should be able to hear the octave there. In the middle, there's a G, and that's the fifth. That's the fifth note in the major scale. And we're not, not, we're not talking about frets here. We're talking about musical intervals, which is Do, Re, Mi. I think most people know that, the Do, Re, Mi. So, one, two, three, four, five. I'm just counting up, Do, Re, Mi. And there's my middle string on the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. So if I've got C, D, E, F, G, G. So you see we've got G, A, B, C on the top. Okay, that, that's, that's the basic of the tuning. If you have a, a, a different root note, don't worry. If, you, if your strings are heavier and you want to tune that bottom one to a G or an E, as long as you count up one, two, three, four, five, put your middle string on the same tuning, octave on the top, you'll have the same intervals. Uh, it's often called a power chord because there are really only two notes in it, a root and a fifth. There's no third, which is the normal thing that you one, two, three, which is the normal, uh, no, normal way a chord's built up. Uh, but it is also the traditional dulcimer tuning, uh, those intervals. Okay, a little bit of theory there. Um, a few of the basic bits and pieces. Holding your guitar. Um, I think I, I did another simple introduction thing, and there was one point which I, I made about the way you hold the neck, particularly if you're playing slide. I'll just say a little bit about that in a moment. Um, but my way of doing it, and remember this is my way of doing it, with things like cigar box guitar, there's no real accepted way of doing it. I just find this is what works for me. I've played fiddle, mandolin, ukulele, guitar and various other things over the years, uh, taken up the cigar box guitar and I think it's transferring those basic techniques onto this instrument and I find this, this, is, this works. Whether you're standing up or sitting down, um, the principle remains the same. You need to be. I'm sat. I'm sat here on a on a hard office chair, trying to stop it tilting back. Um, and I've got the guitar on my uh, uh, resting across my, my my knee here. But if you look, I'm I'm holding the guitar down with my far, forearm. They t obviously most cigar box guitars tend to be a bit neck heavy. They tend to have a fairly long neck and a light body. So I'm um, I'm just keeping it balanced with my, with my forearm and on, on there. I'm not holding it in place with this hand, it's just the weight of my arm. So then when I, I'm not then, what I'm not doing, oops, just dropped something on the floor. What I'm not doing is supporting the neck. What that does, it, le it leaves your left hand, right hand if you're left-handed, I am left-handed, but I play right-handed. It, le it leaves your fretting hand free to do the job of doing holding down chords, sliding, fretting or whatever, you're not holding up the guitar, it's quite the opposite, if anything the guitar gives your hand a bit of support. So that's that's a very important thing. Obviously if you stood up and you've got a strap, the strap's doing that for you. You can put a strap, if you have difficulty you can just tie a piece of string or use a strap to hold the headstock up. Some people use a more classical guitar style, actually resting it in their lap, so it's a, the, the body's on their other thigh, um, it sort of helps it balance a little bit better. Same thing though, you're just holding it in place with, with a very, very light uh, uh, pressure from a forearm. And then 
doesn't work for me. I feel more comfortable in a conventional guitar. It's whatever works for you. But it is important, really, that you shouldn't be wrestling the, the instrument, that you shouldn't be having to prop it up. If you're having difficulty, tie a bit of string on or use a strap. Okie doke. So that's that. I'll talk a little bit about the left hand. Uh, this guitar setup is fretted, so I can play fretted notes. Or I can play slide. I'm doing this totally unamplified, so if some of the sound is a little bit weak and things like harmonics don't come over, I've not got it plugged in. It doesn't really matter. Okay, left hand. So you'll probably want to do a little bit of slide. Uh, I use like using glass bottleneck. I make the, I make these my, my myself. You can use whatever suits you. Uh, whether it's metal, piece of copper pipe, bone, glass. I like glass because it's got that a little bit of weight and helps the sustain because. Really, it's acting as a movable fret. You're not fretting the, you're not stopping the strings, making the note by pressing a bit against the, the frets. The slide has to do that. So if the slide's very soft or light, it, you won't get a nice clear note. Uh, I like to use my little finger. There's lots of other slide players use different fingers. The beauty about that is it means you can do things like this. You can put a, you can put a bar. And you can use your other fingers to do nose. And do various fretting bits and pieces with your other fingers. Not, criti not critical, but that's the way I do it. Okay, how you put your left hand on the guitar. And I'm saying you put your hand on the guitar. You're not grabbing the guitar neck. Sometimes you might, you can hook your thumb over to do a note. It's so narrow. Um, you don't really need to do that. Also, with the bottleneck, I like to put the, the lip here against my finger. So it's sitting down like, come sir. Uh, but with these narrow necks, if you quite often the bot these necks are slightly tapered. So if you've got the lip here, it doesn't really matter because it's, oops, it's going to, it'll hang over the fretboard. Well, you might clunk it if you've got a wide six string neck. Okay, so I'm using it on my little finger. One thing which I find very helpful is that your you, you, guitar doesn't actually sit in that web between your, your your first finger and your thumb. It doesn't sit. Once you, once you start doing that with the neck, you sort of tend to grab onto it and it sticks. It doesn't give you that freedom. What you want is your hand on the guitar as a, as a, a, and just using, I just use my thumb, either just on the top here, just putting the pad of my thumb on the top so my left arm is hanging off or I move it a little bit over but even then if I move my thumb quite a bit over so say the back of the joint is on there you can see this web part between my finger and the thumb isn't actually in contact with the guitar so you see what that does it means I can rock my whole hand for that nice vibrato and leaves me I've only just got the thumb to slide up to my positions. Um, the other way is a classical guitar technique where you put your thumb in the back. It may feel a bit weird, but if you've got the guitar well supported, that's just enough to be able to just pinch slightly to get you your notes. That's all you need. It's a very, very light touch with the left hand. So that can go in the back, back of the neck like that. The one thing which... Um, I don't like doing and it makes me cringe a bit when I see people do it is you will see people do this they'll take the thumb off and really to get access to these high notes but quite often you'll see people take the thumb off and slide up here as if it gives them some sort of freedom but what it does do it, 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 it gives you the only point of contact then is the slide and the string it gives you no no guidance, no positioning for your hand, and no reference point. Very, very difficult to do. It, I would only use it in extremis if you were going right the way, up, like third octave up the string. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. If you want to do it that way, fine, but I think you're making life hard for yourself. Uh, I'm all for making things easy.
Okie doke. Been going on for 10 minutes and not really uh, showed you much. But the, these are very sort of basic techniques which you need to get the hang of. Okay, using, using the slide, when you fret a note, obviously you put your finger behind the fret. The, the string is stopped by the fret itself. With the slide, that slide needs to be right on the fret. And if we're playing on the top string, and I'm just going to angle my slide away. So I'm only touching the top string. Not like this. I'm making a horrible rattling noise on the lower strings. I'm just doing it so it just, just rides on that top string, so I'm angling it away. And I'm right over the fret at each time here at the 12th fret, here at the 7th fret, here at the 5th fret. Those are the important things for if you're doing a blues song, that's the chord progression, it's the it's the, uh, the the open, fifth fret, seventh fret. The chord positions are called one, that's the root note, one, two, three, that's the fourth chord, I'm just putting a bar across, one, two, three, four, five, that's the fifth chord, fifth note in the major scale. There you go, but it's got to be right on the money. If you if you're the remotest bit out, it'll set it'll it'll sound awful. Now we're playing slide, but a lot of people just slide and whammy about all over the place without really listening. That's a really important thing because it's much more akin to playing the fiddle or the double bass when you play the slide. You you can only use these frets as a guideline. They're not going to make the note for you. You have to make the note with plucking and the contact with this slide. And I like to think of putting the tip of my finger, just as you would playing a note, the tip of your finger underneath that slide, whichever finger it is, think about making contact with the tip of your finger when you hit that note. See, the end of my finger is just on the slide tilted away so I'm not interfering with the other strings and I can make the other strings ring. So that's the solo note and you need to be able to do this accurately. Not slide, you, you, yes you can slide some of the note to get that expression but you should be able to hit the note exactly. Uh, here's a little thing, if I'm just plucking pairs of strings, I'll pluck the top and the bottom and the top and the middle together and we can do a little exercise that goes, say, let's do the open, 4th fret, open again, 5th fret, I'm pulling the top, pinching the top and the, the middle strings together, I'm going to pinch the top and the bottom together and then up to the 12th fret, top and the middle together. was just at the fourth, the seventh, and the and the twelfth. You need that accuracy. Major scale, do re mi. Okay. I'm not sliding up to it. I'm going straight on. Accuracy is important. Once you get the hang of it. then you can try sliding. And I'm only sliding a tiny bit. I'm only perhaps coming up just a fret below or not even that. Sometimes even just a quarter tone is enough. I'm going up above and coming back down there just by Half a fret, a quarter tone. It's quite subtle, it's not very edgy. A lot of slide players you'll hear them begin. It soon gets pretty monotonous and it's fairly unsubtle. 
Um, I like to have a bit more control and slide playing is all about control and discipline. So it's very boring to have to do exercises. But if you can't find the notes, you're going to have trouble. Uh, okay, the thing about sliding, as I said, I'm only coming up, a, it's a very subtle thing, and when you're playing, uh, I might only slide perhaps 10 or 20 percent of, of a number, and it's the dynamic of coming up to, if I want to get to the, if I want to get to the fourth fret, I might just slide up. backing off and going back up. The other thing, the vibrato, that's perhaps the most difficult thing and this is the really important thing about just having your thumb in light contact with the neck. Your left arm, your fretting arm needs to be nice and relaxed all the way from here right the way down to your fingertips. Your arm should be away from your body. It shouldn't, don't do this. It's very easy to, if you get tired, to do this or rest your elbow on your knee and hunch forward and it just limits, it, it restricts how much you can use your arm. It should, the, the, your left arm should be nice and relaxed, you've got the weight of that behind your vibrato. What I tend to do is put my thumb on top and just let my whole hand relax. It's going to be like a piece of jelly. Everything should be shaking. So, and then I put the slide on and just, in, just introduce a little, just enough muscle tone, enough tension just to bring that slide up. You feel the weight of the slide in your hand and just let it touch the string. You're not pinching, if you pinch it in, you'll get these horrible rattles. If you don't use enough pressure, you'll get that as well. So it's just got to be right. Just enough tension so it just rides the string. And the vibrato is not a wild shake. It's a controlled push and pull, push and pull, a rocking backwards and forwards. And you can see, you see what's happening here with my hand? It's pivoting. It's not shaking, it's not flapping. And if I bring the slide up using that motion, I get a nice, sweet, playing across all three strings I'm keeping the slide at right angles to the strings otherwise I get an out of tune note you can be a little, be a little bit slack on the top string but as a matter of principle you need to be square across the strings to avoid that sad sorry sound of the bad slide player see I'm not putting the slide the vibrato on straight away there I'm, I'm, I'm coasting up to the note Another thing you can do to get a nice clean sound to avoid try and get rid of that. It's very easy to, to get that rattle if you let your one of your other fingers, in this case my first finger, I'm deadening the sound because I always get a no, an, an, an overtone behind the notes. If you put your finger there, just trail it very gently. It's a much purer note. Sometimes you might want that raspy. So cleanness is very important and the accuracy. You must, must be accurate. So you must listen. You can't just think, well, I'm over the fret, so I must be right. 
and you can't afford to be in the area, you need to be bang on and you need to be able, sometimes it's, it's useful to slide up to get right onto the intonation. But you also really need in your playing to be able to get on first time without uh, without having to mess around. Okay, I'll just do one little number. Uh, when will it so like a uh, combination of poor boy and jitterbug swing, I think. I'm doing a lot of fretting. Playing on that unison there, very banjo. Okay, I hope that was useful. A few basic tips, sorry it's taken so long, and maybe the next one we'll actually do a, 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 a couple of songs and maybe talk about the right hand technique because I've been mainly talking about the left hand technique. Okay, thanks for dropping by.